Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti from anthonymorganti.com. Welcome to Mastering On One Photo Raw 2018. In this video, we're going to take a look at the photo filter that's found in the effects module of On One Photo Raw 2018. I often talk about when I shot film, and when I shot film, I often used photo filters. And when I used them, it was usually for color correction, not necessarily for creative purposes. When you shot film, film was made with a specific color temperature. For instance, you would have a film that was labeled daylight, and you were supposed to use that film under daylight conditions to give you perfect color rendering. While sometimes you'd be caught with the wrong film in your camera for the specific type of light you were shooting in, you may have daylight film in your camera and find that you're shooting indoors under incandescent lights. And if you do that, your images would be yellow. So you would put a filter on your camera to compensate or correct that yellow. Uh, usually it would be what's called an ADA filter. It would be a blue filter. So the blue would kind of compensate for the yellow and color correct the yellow so you'd have normal color rendering. And they used to make film for, you know, indoors. It was called tungsten film. And sometimes you'd have tungsten film in your camera and find that you're outside shooting in bright daylight. And you would have to use an 85 filter, they called it. It was the numbers. They used 85 filter to color correct your tungsten film for the outdoor lighting conditions you were shooting under. So in digital world, that color correction isn't needed anymore. But we do use color photo filters for creative purposes. And often you'll see these numbers, 80, 82, 85, uh, used. Those just refer to the original colors of the filters back in the days of film. With On One, it has those numbers and it has a lot more. So we're going to add a filter. We're just going to go up to Add Filter and go to Photo Filter. And you can see it's one of those filters. Bam, does something as soon as you turn it on. And it actually looks like it added an ADA color filter to our image. And you can see that's a blue filter. Now, there's a lot of functionality here. So I think this is one of those filters that you really have to open up and play with yourself to see everything it's, it can do. It's going to be difficult for me to really explain what all the functionality is, but I'll do my best. Going across the top, we have the styles, which are inherent in all on one filters. Uh, you could just click one. There's 85. And I mentioned that on one has the numbers. So this would be the equivalent of an 85 filter that you would put on your lens. You can see it's a very warm filter. ND grad. ND stands for neutral density. And whenever I say grad, that stands for a graduated filter. In the case of a neutral density filter, it doesn't put any color on your image at all. It just really diminishes the exposure. And because it's graduated, it's only doing it to part of the image. And then it graduates to not affecting the image at all. And you can see here it's affecting the top part of the image. And then there's a graduation zone or graduate right there th that it doesn't affect the bottom part of the image. Then we have a bi-color filter, warm, cool. And you can see how the functionality as I switch between these different types of filters gives you different sliders down here. So this is uh, two different colors. In this case, the top half is one color and the bottom half is a different color, color one and color two. <clears throat> One thing I want to tell you while I'm thinking of it, you'll notice that this color one, we have a hue, so we could kind of change the hue of the color. You also could change the hue of the color by clicking on this little swatch, and you'll come up with the color picker. So you could come in and pick a color, specifically with your color picker that is inherent to your computer's operating system. So we pick that color. So we could change the hue, and the amount is kind of the intensity of that color, or the saturation of that color. Then we do the same thing for color two. We could pick the hue and the amount. Or click on the swatch if we prefer to use the color picker for that. Directly below hue and amount for color two, you'll see saturation and polarizer. I really wish on one would put a line there because saturation affects the entire image, not just the part that is getting, or not just color two, I should say, in this case, because it looks like it would affect only color two. 
and polarizer affects the entire image also. So I just wanted to bring that up while I was thinking about it because uh, that is easy to kind of confuse what those two sliders do. Now we're going across the top still so we have that bicolor filter uh, that's warm cool. We also have a center filter. It's hard to see what that does, but if I bring transition down and bring amount up, you could see that it's affecting part of the image, the center and not the outside. We also could flip that with this little drop down and have it affect just the edges and not the inside. So that's kind of a crazy uh, filter there. Click the drop down, we have a lot more. You could see we have the numbers, those 80As, 81A, 85. Then we just have these straight colors, blue, blue graduated filter. So we have all these different filters. If you'd prefer to see these filters side by side, go over to the left panel and click on filters. When you have the photo filter active, you'll see all the different filters side by side. If you want to see a larger rendition of each of these filters than these small postage stamp samplings, click on this brick, set of bricks, and you'll get a full screen view of the filters. And if you like one, let's say I like orange, just click on it and then it will apply that filter to your image. You can see we have the orange filter applied. And when you want, you're done with the slot panel, you could just like click on presets and you're out of there. So we have all these different color filters, and we also have these different types of filters. We had the graduated filter, the bicolor filter, and that center filter. And again, depending on what filter type you pick, the functionality down here below it will change. A graduated filter has um, sliders and a drop down, so you could pick where you want the graduation to appear. For example, we have position, we have top, half, fast. That's what it picked. And you know what, I should probably uh, try to just make, whoops, now see how saturation affects everything? It's affecting the whole thing. What I'm, what I'm getting at is I want to make it very obvious what's going on here. Let's do here, we'll do that. There we go. So I want to make it very obvious, not obviously something I would use myself. So we have top half fast. That means the top half is getting the color from the filter and the graduated part of the filter is very fast. Then we have top half slow. So you can see it's a little bit of a slower graduated uh, filter. Top third, top third again, uh, slow fast, and then so on. You could have uh, side by side, left and right. You could see uh, let's go with left half slow. You can see the left half is getting the filter and then it's a slow graduation to no filter at all. You also could change these with these sliders. So if you your position drop down doesn't give you the exact position you want, you could use these sliders to better put the filter where you want. What I suggest you do is move transition to zero so you could see the transition very easily. Then you could come in here and you could rotate it, let's say, to where you want it. In this case, let's say I want it going across the horizon line, but it's still a little above the horizon line. So I would take the distance slider and move it so it's directly on, in this case, the horizon line. So I could get that. Then I could come back to transition and feather it. And that's what it actually does. Transition is feathering that edge so you could have a smoother transition. Now that, of course, is the case with the graduated fil filter type. If we use a bicolor filter, we have different functionality down here, and this is why I mentioned it's sometimes difficult to demonstrate this filter. I could go with a different U uh, to make it obvious. Let's just go with something really horrendous. So we have a very warm hue here with a mount all the way up, and that's down here at the bottom. At the top, we have a very strong U. You have modes. Do you want it strong? So that's very strong. Do you want it more subtle? See the difference between the two? Do you want clean highlights? So anything that's white, hopefully will stay white. And, or would you prefer clean shadow? So anything that's black will stay, hopefully black, and not be tinged with any color. 
Uh, for the sake of the demonstration, let's go with strong so I could better demonstrate what we're doing here. Uh, so we have that. We have these two colors I mentioned. And then we have saturation again, which affects everything. And polarizer, which affects everything. And then we have the position. Um, so we could go, you know, hopefully find something here that works. So I could go top half slow. So, you know, or you could come in here and dial it in yourself. Again, with the bicolor filter, like the graduated filter, I suggest you put transition to zero so you could really see that edge. Then you could rotate it exactly how you want it and then position it with the distance slider exactly where you want it positioned. And then you could come back to transition and feather it out as you want. So that is the bicolor. Then we have the center filter, and I don't personally see a lot of use with the center filter unless you're, you want to use a color vignette. And in that case, you could, in this case, make sure that the drop down says edges, so you're only affecting the edges. Pick the color you want uh, for your colored vignette, like that. And then you could come down here and choose the mode, strong or subtle. Let's go with subtle in this case. And the size. Probably see when it's all the way to the left, it's affecting more of the image when we're on edges. If I were on center, it would affect the small part of the center. So we're affecting more of the image. Let's go to a sharp transition so you could better see it. And let's go to a super saturated. There we go. So you could better see what we're doing here. So when we're affecting the edges and we move size to the right, we're making the actual part that's being affected smaller. So the part in the middle is not getting any effect at all. The transition will we'll feather it out. So if you want to have a colored vignette, you could use this with the edges uh, drop down on, or this drop down on edges. Its functionality is limited because you can't really center it or move it to where you want it moved. Um, you can't make it anything but round. It's always going to be round. So it's a little more difficult to uh, control than a real vignette. But that really is probably the only uh, application I could see for a center type of filter unless you're doing something super creative. So usually, to tell you the honest God truth, I come in here and I just use a center or a solid filter. I usually like to warm my images so I would pick a warming filter like an 85 uh, then I might come in here and I might change the amount a little bit and I often will just go up to opacity and take opacity down because usually I don't like to do anything in too much of an extreme I just want to warm the image slightly so I'll bring opacity down something like that that's usually my limit of using the photo filter and I usually like to have my highlights clean. So I, especially when I have a landscape image, I like the clouds that are white to be white. So that's my limited use of the photo filter. If you find you're using the photo filter, and we covered this uh, in other filters, you could create your own style if you find you're using the same settings all the time. So if I find that I'm always using a... Um, a photo filter with these settings. I could come in here and click on this more, click on save style, and I could call it my style or anything you want. Just call it whatever you like and click save. Then when you click this little more drop down, it's right there at the top. So we could get rid of that filter. I'll add it again. We'll go to more, go to my style, and there's my style. Automatically set, even has the opacity the way I had it. So you could create your own style. You find you're using the same type of photo filter over and over and over again. It's very easy to do. And again, I think photo filter is really a powerful filter, one of many powerful filters in On One Photo Raw 2018. I encourage you to experiment with it. It's very difficult video to do to demonstrate because the functionality changes so much between the different filter types that it's difficult to really uh, demonstrate all the functionality involved. It's something you're going to have to play with and practice with. And hopefully, um, you find something you like uh, with that photo filter. Thank you, everyone that watches my videos. I truly do 
appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.